Now we're going to South Africa and Swartland with silverfish, silverfish, I think that's how they say it, in their senso, aged, which is so nice. Um, so it's from 2015 and it is really nice to uh, see what's happened with this wine over the last seven-ish years. Um, so they are a couple and they make really interesting definitely skewing more on the funky side of natural wines in Swartland, which is not a normal, or not norm, not a traditional place uh, for wine growing there. So they've really started to, um, it's kind of like the like Languedoc in France, like it's where all of these up and coming producers are coming out of because land prices are generally cheaper and they're able to be a little bit more experimental. Um, so they're making some amazing stuff and this is one of them. So um, first of all, how cute is this bottle? <laughs> like the cap and everything on it, I just love it so much. Um, but that's not what actually matters. It matters what's inside the bottle. So um, with age, uh, red wines become less uh, dark or become lighter and uh, white wines become darker. So you can definitely start to see uh, that it is becoming um, more like a tawny almost, and it has a uh, rim variation. Rim variation is another way to know if something is older. And that just means that it is like darker in the middle of the wine versus at the rims or the edges. It's, uh, it looks more clear. So certainly seeing the age there on the nose. This is just such a nice nose. <laughs> I just love what age does. Um, to red wines, and I love I love them when they have oak, but um, it's even more interesting to me, I think, when they're made in a way where they can age and they don't have oak because some of the other aspects of it come out. So like, it's not like becoming, you know, more vanilla or whatever, but like the honey, the honey characteristics of like aging are still there. So it's like, it's like whatever nice fruits were there is like starting to be replaced by some of the earthy notes as well as, um, just like adding a little bit of like a, it's not even a freshness. I don't know how to describe like adding, this is gonna, this is not right. Sugar to the, <laughs> sugar to the fruit. I don't know, I'll come up with it as we go. So it smells like it's going to still be like incredibly acidic and I'm really happy to still see that there's um, grapefruit in there. So I like, guess like there's still a bright cherry um, and over time, normally the fruit characteristics diminish. Um, so it's nice to still see that. And I think it's kind of like a, a leathery, leathery honeyed note. I don't know how to put those two things together, but that's certainly what I'm kind of getting out of it. Let's see if we can parse it out in the palette. Wow, I just love aged wine so much. So I'm actually like the first thing I was getting on it were things like like um, floral characteristics like violets. Uh, that really like the finish is long, very long. Um, and that's kind of like what I was left with, which how delightful is that? That is so great when you have a wine that's able to do that. Um, but at the beginning, it started with like initially, I would say like the leatheriness, then it goes into kind of like the bright cherry um and then it kind of finishes with like those earthy floral tones let's try again also maybe like some cranberry and stuff like the amount of fruit that's still in here is really nice and surprising <laughs> um yeah this is this is one that you could just keep going back to and each time you'd probably find something different uh, because each like there is there's so much in this wine. Um, so whatever you think, I'm sure you're right. And there's probably even more uh, than that. So because of the loveliness and fanciness of this bottle, I would certainly save it for a special occasion. It could still age. I wouldn't let it age for like a ton longer. I'd say maybe like another two to three years max. Um, but it could certainly still improve after that. It would probably just be, you probably lose the fruit after that. Um, so as far as pairings go, I'll be nerdy again and say with a nice book <laughs> because you just want to study it and uh, keep, keep, um, 
seeing what you can find in it, but but really like um, something special to go with it. And I would probably stick with something kind of basic uh, and basic in that I like, I call basic meals, but I like them like when it's like, you have a pork tenderloin, a broccoli and a rice or a potato or something like that. I would go that route versus doing like, like it's definitely not like a pasta wine. It's not, um, it honestly is lighter and less tannic than I was expecting. So it's throwing me off a little bit. Maybe like, oh, hang on, let me think. I honestly, no, I was gonna say like a duck in an orange sauce, but I honestly think that might even be a little bit too far. Um, if you don't want to go fancy, it would probably go really well with like orange chicken and like Chinese food, but I would go something nicer so that this can really be the center of attention. I mean, it will be no matter what, because it's an amazing wine, but I would say like a beef tenderloin or like a pork chop, um, could be really nice with it and just have your simple sides. Maybe like tagine food could be good with it because there is, it is so complex and tagine food is also very complex and has a lot going on. Could also be good, but I'm going to stick with my initial. I would like to make a pork tenderloin with this. So I'll, I'll make a note of that and see if we can do that for this bottle. Hope you enjoy. <laughs>